Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back, all the way back. Uh, Texas, um, we got a, a fun show for you today. Juan Francisco Estrada versus, uh, I just I just learned how to say this, R.G. Cortez of Mexico City, Mexico. Uh, if you go to uh, 3dboxingblog.com, I did a full uh, scouting report on uh, Cortez. Uh, so check that out. I will also link it in the description. Um, but when is, uh, yes, Juan Francisco Estrada is a legendary future first ballot Hall of Famer. And yes, um, he did duck Josh Franco. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. A quick hits comes at you every day. Trying to give you a lot more content, trying to rededicate. Um, 87 minutes a day, quick hits, keeps you updated, the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. We're going to break down Francisco Estrada's duck of Josh Franco. And please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to autism research and recovery. So please like, uh, share, and subscribe to Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All right, let's get into today's show. Um, RG Cortez. Uh, is is Juan Francisco Estrada's opponent? He's a decent fighter, uh, twenty three two and two. Uh, he lo- he lost two fights early in his career. Uh, he started off as two and two. He won his first two and then lost his next two. Uh, and he's been unbeaten since. He's won eleven in a row. He's got no um, no wins of note really. Uh, no big names. No 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 world title shots. No future champions. Nothing. Um, so. Um, you know, he, he's got a little bit of pop, uh, despite his record. Like you guys said, you can check out the, the, the uh, scouting report in the description below. He's a decent fighter, re- really, really sloppy defensively. Um, I, I just don't understand. And I, I don't think it's the worst fight in the world. Like, I think, uh, Cortez is a good fighter, a good offensive fighter, at least, you know, I, I think despite his record, he's got good pop, um, he can fight from all, all ranges. He can fight from you know the mid range. He fights really well on the inside, um, and he and you know he, he throws these sharp shooting right hands uh, from the outside. He's not a bad fighter. Uh, like I said, he does t- telegraph his shots a little bit. He shows his punches. Uh, he's pretty straight in and out. Um, I mean, this is a guy that Estrada is going to destroy. Not that he's a bad fighter. He's not a bad fighter. He's a pretty good fighter. It's the wrong weight class, and Estrada is. Assuming Estrada's not completely shot, um, you know, Estrada is an an all-time great fighter. Um, So how do we get here, right? So Estrada was supposed to fight Franco for a year now. It's been a year almost, right, since last October. This fight's in September. It's 11 months since he's supposed to fight Franco. he vacated, you know, th- that fight. He was supposed to fight Chuck Latino. That fight fell apart because the uh, first Chuck Latino tested positive for COVID. Then Estrada did, and then it was was was, was sidelined entirely. Um, and then Estrada and Franco, um, you know, uh, Franco had the WBA super, and Franco had the WBA regular, and um, that was supposed to go to purse bids to, to kind of unify those belts, kind of tie those up, and, and get one champ in the WBA. Would have been a great fight, Estrada and, and Franco, 50-50 kind of fight. And it went to purse bids. It did come in a little light. Um, and Franco, um, um, Estrada um, decided to vacate the belt and not fight Franco at all. Um, so, okay, okay, are we going to get? Chuck Latino fight. We're going to get an Ioka fight. Are we going to like, are we going to get a big fight at it? Are we going to get a Bam Rodriguez fight? What are we going to get? Right? Like the money came in light for the Franco fight. If Eddie Hearn wanted it, he could have paid the, you know, he could have paid for it. Um, or if Oscar wanted it at that particular time, Oscar could have, could have paid for it, but the fight didn't happen. Right. Uh, mostly because at the time it appeared that, Estrada was going to want a bigger fight, more money. 
okay, is he going to fight Chocolatito for a third time? That was kind of the consensus, right? If not, Ioka was there. Um, Nietes was there. There were some big names from good fights with, with, with great fighters in that weight class. Uh, Bam Rodriguez is sitting there, right? It's like, okay, um, is it going to be a unification fight with, unification fight with Bam? Um, and then this name, R.G. Cortez, comes up. No one really knows who it is. Like I said, a couple losses, a couple draws. Good fighter, nothing special. It's not a big money fight. It's not a unification fight. It's not a mandatory. It's not an eliminator. Why is he taking this fight, right? Like, why is he not fighting Franco? Franco's a better fight. It's not, you know, I'm not saying beating Josh Franco would, would, would elevate Estrada a past Chocolatito, you know, legacy-wise or anything like that. But it's a great fight, and it, it, was, it, it would bring some clarity to the vision. It would be an opportunity for Estrada to prove that the WBA belt was his, and, and the same thing for Franco. It makes the fight made a lot of sense, and it's a good fight. You have a young upstart against an aging champion. Let's see if the aging champion still has enough left to keep off Franco. It made a lot of fight, and, and on paper, Franco versus Estrada is a great fight. <clears throat> uh, Franco, and again, RG Cortez is not a bad fighter. Uh, RG Cortez would be stopped by Franco in five or six rounds. I'm pretty confident in that. He gets hit way too much. He just he just gets hit too much. Um, Franco is a much more technically sound boxer, a much more sound fighter. Right? He uses his jab a lot more. Right? He doesn't get hit as much, although Franco gets hit a little bit too much too. Um, you know, Franco is a more complete offensive fighter. Although I said, like I said, Cortez is a good fighter offensively. But uh, Franco just does everything a little bit better, and some things a lot better than than Cortez does. Uh, Franco's a really good fighter, um, and that's what made that fight with Estrada intriguing. I, I think a lot, the popular opinion w w was kind of trending towards Estrada, but it was a great fight, right? Obviously, I'm going to pick Franco in that fight, um, but it was a great fight, and now we're not getting it, and we're getting. And like I said, we didn't lose this fight for a trilogy with Chocolatito or even a Nietes or an Ioka fight. We're getting RG <laughs> Cortez, someone no one heard of, no one cares. It's it's, it's like Ocampo, right? When Spencer Ocampo, at least that was a mentor, but it's like we're never going to hear it. He's got a fight coming up. We're never going to hear of this guy again because he's, he's not at that level, right? RG Cortez is not at a top 10 or 15 even. Uh, Hundred super flyweight happens to be the best division in the sport, probably. And I'm gonna rank all the all, all the divisions uh, upcoming on the blog. Um, but it's not right. He's not at that level. Um. So you know, it's not a money fight. It's not a legacy fight. It's not a mandatory. And he actually had to vacate a belt to get this fight. Why wouldn't he just fight Franco? Because it's a duck. You know, the Franco fight wasn't for. Huge bucks, and he knows there's a lot of risk involved in that fight. You know, Estrada knows that Chuck, uh, Franco's good. He, he knows that Franco could beat him. And if Franco beats him, then the big money fights are off the table, and the big money fights now belong to Franco. All right, if Franco goes in there and beats Estrada, which is possible, very possible, um, the the intrigue in a third Chocolatito Estrada fight is gone, and the, the intrigue now would be in a Chocolatito Franco fight. Um, so he's going to cash in this, this little payday and, and hope to get Chocolatito down the road. But this is a duck. There's, there's nothing else to call it, right? This isn't a fight the fans wanted. This isn't even a, a fight the fans know of. It's not a fight, you know, it's not a big money fight. It's not a legacy. There's no reason for him to be fighting RG Cortez instead of Josh Franco. There's absolutely no reason. There's no sound reason for it, except that he didn't want to fight Franco. And why didn't he want to fight Franco? Because Franco's a live dog, a real fighter. Like I said, Estrada would be favored in that fight, I would imagine. Franco would be a live dog. A lot of people would like Franco in that fight, including myself. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. I mean, I, what else would you call it? If this is not a duck, what's a duck? If this is not a duck, if fighting RG Cortez instead of Josh Franco and giving up your belt to a not fight Josh Franco to fight RG Cortez is not a duck, Please tell me what a duck is. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Remember, quick hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest boxing news and rumors. Uh, it is August 29th, 2022. From Texas to the world, 
Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.